three tested ways to invest like a sophisticated hedge fund manager. Let's take a look in this program at three ways to invest like a hedge fund and somewhat duplicate their investment performance without having to pay a penny in management fees. Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic as I am. And if you are doing wonderful as I am, please go grab a cup of coffee or tea or <laughs> that's good. Now, before we get into the new booty, I just want to quickly say that this is not investment or financial advice. We're just putting the tips out there for your information. So a listener or a viewer discretion is advised. Every investor situations and, and needs are different. So you want to do your homework and if necessary, hire a specialist before invested. Now, let's quickly give a shout out to Carson Cleveland from Stepman, Delaware, Casey Hill in Edgemore, Delaware, and Elena Ford in Hawkinson, Delaware. The first tested way to invest like a sophisticated hedge fund manager is to invest in alternative mutual funds. Now, what are those? Alternative funds are mutual funds or ETF, i.e. exchange traded funds that invest primarily in non-traditional securities. And those are leveraged loans, commodities, real estate. Those are instruments that you will never, you will not hear about on, on TV. I mean, usually most investors, most individual investors know about stocks and bonds. But those ETFs, the alternative funds, they invest in alternative investments, i.e., again, real estate, commodities, and leveraged loans. Now, the thing here is that these funds, because of the instruments they invest in, are usually not appropriate for most investors. Now, you can use them, however, as diversification if this applies to your portfolio. Now, this is a, those funds are a great way to gain access to non-traditional investment securities. Again, this is really the purview of hedge funds, right? They invest in non-traditional investment securities. That's how they are able to generate the the alpha, the uh, the the ROI, the superior ROI that we know they usually generate. Of course, hedge funds also have their their down years and uh, they have their down quarters. As, there, as everything else so our job here is not to idealize hedge fund investments we're just here to say that we, if you want to mimic those who are the best the best performing high, um, hedge funds they always do that and one way is to invest in alternative mutual funds now the, another thing i want to say here is that if you want to basically invest in alternative mutual funds there are a few things you need to consider, and those are very important, and those should be part of your investment strategy, right? Now, one thing, market risk. Market risk is very important. Those alternative funds invest in non-traditional securities. In other words, you know, there are price fluctuations. Their price fluctuations can be greater than traditional securities, such as stock and, stocks and bonds, right? So this is very important to to think about before you invest in those funds. Another thing you need to think about is expenses. Now, an alternative mutual fund usually is more expensive than a regular mutual fund. And this is based on their design and based on their functioning, right? They tend to have higher expenses because of things like management costs, Right, so this could be between one and two percent expense ratio. You also have because they those funds engage a lot of research, they engage in a lot of research, extensive research, research, and high levels of trading. Right, so when it comes to trading, you trade, you have some uh, some brokerage fees, you have some spreads, all that kind of stuff. You also have to think about the structure of an alternative fund. Now, the thing here is that the Alternative funds are not as clear when it comes to legal structure as you, you would have a normal mutual fund. So basically you want to do your best, you want to do your own due diligence to know the fund's objectives and holding, right? You should really also understand at a minimum what those holdings are and 
the correlation that they have between themselves. Let me just explain that. Imagine you have um, an alternative fund and you consider you want to invest some, some cash in the fund, right? You want to look at the portfolio of that particular fund and see the top 10 holdings, right? You want to see the industry, you want to see the, the country, you want to see the, uh, the, the sector, because in an industry you might have sectors and subsectors, right? For instance, if you have technology, the technology industry, you have sectors, right? You have hardware, you have software, you have consumer goods, and that kind of stuff. So you want to really look at that. Another element you need to pay attention to is the fund manager. You want to know, you know, it, because those alternative funds are usually actively managed. You want to know who is managing the fund. You want to know their, 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 their track record. You want to know number of uh, years of experience, you know, that kind of stuff. You want to know their uh, regulatory track record record because the last thing you want is to put your money to be managed by somebody who has been banned by uh, by the SEC or is under some kind of a, a regulatory scrutiny, right? We don't want that. Now, also, alternative funds generally have a minimum. Again, they uh, it fluctuates between uh, seven to ten thousand. The the norm is usually ten thousand, but sometimes you also have some funds who would ask a minimum of twenty thousand dollars, you know, before you can invest um, in their funds. So those are little things you need to know. So just kind of just just want to wrap up this this first way of investing like a sophisticated hedge fund manager. You know, alternative mutual funds are not for every investor, right? They have mark you know higher expenses higher um, minimal investment you know uh, minimum monetary amount so you know 10 grand 15 grand and also higher market risk so those are things you need to remember so you want to research the industry you want to research the farm before getting into that now the historically though research has shown that investing in alternative mutual funds can be beneficial can be beneficial and some Mutual funds, some alternative mutual funds have posted double digits return in the last 20 years. If you just go online and just Google them, you can find them very easily. So it's nothing very, uh, it's nothing unusual. It's just, it just takes work, research, discipline, and patience. All right. I'll be right back right after this. Let's go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We just finished the first step, the first way to invest like a hedge fund. Now we want to dig, dig into the second one, the second way. I just want to quickly again repeat here that this is not investment or financial advice. We're just putting the tips out there for your own information. So viewer and listener, discretion, discretion is advised. Every investor's situation and needs are different. So you want to do your, your own homework and if necessary, hire an expert before investing. All right. Now I want to give a quick shout out to our millions of viewers and listeners in the United States and Canada, particularly in Idaho. And I, uh, I mean here, Rice, John, Pocatello, Idaho. Big Bars in Eagle, Idaho, and Nyan Rogers in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. For those of you who are listening to me right now, please consider subscribing to our channel so we can give you a shout out at one of our, 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 at a future show. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified whenever we drop a new show. We really appreciate that. Like this show, share, comment below, give us your, your experience if you have some about investments, about hedge fund investments particularly, all right, and, and, and today's topic. Now, the second way to invest like a hedge fund is to mimic the holdings of the best performing funds. Now, this is the, this is one of the worst kept secrets, or the best kept secret rather, out there. Everybody talks about hedge funds are so secretive, you know, it's, it's kind of complicated to know what kind of holdings they have it's you know they publish nothing about their holdings their performance they only send data to uh, their uh, investors but that's not really true if you dig a little deep that's not really true now there is something called and i'm going to reveal it today there is something called a 13 i 13 f filing there is a form called 13 dash f that the sec the united states security and exchange commission 
mandates every hedge fund, every institutional investor for that matter, to file every quarter. So those filings are available, they are freely available on the SEC's website. That's www.sec.gov. Now, the thing here is that you can basically go onto the onto the, uh, the commission's website and you can dig into all the hedge funds out there and find out what kind of stocks, bonds, or other instruments they hold. Now, of course, the, the, the SEC um, allows the hedge funds and other, again, it's not, just, it's not just the hedge funds, it's just investment managers in general. Look, our topic today covers the hedge fund industry, so I'm just gonna focus on that. The SEC mandates the uh, hedge funds to file the 13F form no more than 45 days after the end of the quarter. So, for instance, if the quarter ends on March 31st, by April 15th, they need to file that. Now, a lot of them, a lot of hedge funds went on to the last, the last day to file because they, which makes sense, you know, they kind of consider the, uh, their holdings as some kind of proprietary data. Now, so if you go into the 13 app, you can actually retrieve the, the investments, the securities and the instruments that a, a specific hedge fund has had in the previous quarter now i hear you you might say well there is a there is a lag there is a 45 45 day lag yes but honestly over time it doesn't matter because the 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 money quote unquote money the capital gain that you will waste in the in the uh, 45 days you can ca actually you can offset that with because you're not paying any management fee you're not paying any hedge fund fee right as we know the, the hedge fund industry is known for the you know the two percent of assets on the management and 20 percent of investment profit so if you invest a million every year they, they would take you know 20 grand twenty thousand dollars just to cover their operational um, operational expenses and if they make any profit on top of that one million they're getting 20 per 20 percent of that so you're not paying that so you can actually still mimic you can mimic the holdings of those best performing funds and make money in the long run now when it comes to you know the idea here is to copy the investment approach of a hedge fund but not really kind of copy the turnover right the last thing you want is just you know buy and sell buy and sell every day or every other day you want to hold you want to buy hold and look around and, and see and, and, and allow the instruments to grow right you want to allow the, the the position to turn profitable now because if you're in a short position you want the position to decrease so you can make money and if you're in a long position that's the opposite right so the second way here is just to kind of recap here the way the very the best way to do this is just to mimic the holdings of the best performing funds right and again what are the best perform performing funds we're not here to give names we're not here to endorse any hedge funds here but it's very easy to it's very easy to find there is a lot of uh, literature out there on the internet there are many websites that track hedge fund performance that publish periodically the performance of hedge funds so you can really identify very quickly those who those that are doing very well all right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm very happy to have you here. We're still talking about three tested ways to invest like a sophisticated hedge fund manager. I spoke earlier about, the, I gave you the first two ways. The first one was invest in alternative mutual funds. The second way is mimic holdings of best performing funds. The third and final way to invest like a hedge fund is to invest in Forbes 2000. Now, before I... I elaborate on that. Let me quickly again, uh, as we usually do, give a high five to some of our best listeners and followers. We really appreciate them. Uh, those are Alfie Barnes in Honolulu, Hawaii, Kai Holmes in Honolulu, of course, in the state of Hawaii, and Emily Fraser in Kailua Kona in Hawaii. We really want to thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for sticking with us and giving us feedback. We really appreciate it. 
and uh, I just also want to give a quick disclaimer here this is not investment or financial advice we're just putting the tips out there for your information so viewer and listeners discretion is advised every investor's situation and needs are different so you want to do your own, your own homework and if necessary hire a specialist before investing so third and final way to invest like a hedge fund manager invest in Forbes 2000 the world's largest public companies now every year the Forbes magazine published every year around May Forbes magazine publish but publishes the world's the 2000 world's largest public companies and this rankings are very useful because you can filter by industry country territory and state right and what you want to do with that list is you want to stick to the first 100 company with the first 100 companies and if, if necessary you can move on to the next 100 if you can't find a promising company in the first 100 and so on and so forth now with that with that first list of 100 companies what do you do you want to pick one or two leaders in each industry for example let's look at the last list the 2019 release of Forbes 2000 you can buy the stock stocks bonds ETFs related to ICBC that's a Chinese company Apple Ping An Insurance Group Royal Dutch Shell Toyota Alphabets Berkshire Hathaway Amazon now the thing here what you want to do here is that you want to look at the leader again the leader or the next the second best company in each sector right but make sure that you have you hold no more than five percent on a single position right you don't want to put all your eggs in the same bag basket very important to diversify here so if you consider for instance if you take the first 100 you know icbc is the number one they are the, this is a chinese bank if you're comfortable with their fundamentals with their ratio and you comfortable with the chinese economy go ahead and buy that but once you buy icbc you can't buy another company in banking in the banking sector right same thing for apple right so you buy apple you're comfortable that you know they'll still they'll continue making money they'll continue making money everything will be fine so you just you know buy them and uh, so when it comes to electronic consumer electronics you would want to put a hold on any further purchase right moving on to the third uh, company you can say i love ping and insurance group this is an insurance company of course they're located in china if you believe that you know your um, exposure to china is too much so don't buy it but if you think that there's still a good company with solid fundamentals you can go ahead and buy them so you do this exercise for each each sector a lot of uh, very profitable and best performing hedge funds apply this technique uh, and uh, if you read even the wall street journal cnbc and bloomberg have done a lot of um, coverage they've co covered the, that part of the hedge fund industry that follows this this approach now this is the easiest approach this is i would say the quote-unquote laziest approach but it's still profitable right i mean if you have a company like toyota who uh who is a, you know which is a, a leader in the global automotive sector for instance chances are they're going to continue to, to dominate the industry for a certain while so it's good it's a good bet right likewise for berkshire hathaway right another conglomerate um, you know a conglomerate a diversified holding company that has been growing you know very 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 well growing uh, steadily for the last 30 years uh, under the tutelage of Warren Buffett, right? So this is really what the kind of think, thinking you want to have. Another thing you want to do is try to hold each instrument for at least two or three years. I think I spoke about that before. You know, avoid trading in, trading day in and day out, right? You're just wasting a lot of cash, a lot of, it, it takes a lot of time and it's just not worth it because the, the, the you know, Warren Buffett, we just spoke about Warren Buffett, you know, the legendary investor Warren Buffett is known to have said that you know people who actually just buy the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average Index are more likely to make more money than those hedge fund or those hedge fund or mutual fund managers who are actively you know buying and buying and selling. So active trading versus passive trading sometimes 
it's not really um, you know it's just better to be on the passive side right so hold the instrument for at least two or three years now another thing you want to do here is that you want to use the United States Bureau of Economic Analysis breakdown of economic sectors. So if you go on the website of the, the BEA, they have a, a wonderful breakdown of economic sectors, primary, secondary, tertiary, or if you want the the uh, the you know the modern version, that would be agriculture, industry, and services. And what they do is that the BEA breaks down each sector into subsectors. So, as I said earlier, if you have, you know, industry, for instance, you can go into technology, then you have consumer goods and so on and so forth. So, in, in the services, the service sector, for instance, you can have banking, tourism, travel, consulting, software, and so on and so forth. So, you, just to kind of wrap up this section, you want to take the first 100 companies in the Forbes 2000, world's largest public company. You want to break down the companies in by sector you want to buy a leader of the second best performing company in each sector and you want to hold the each hold you want to hold each instrument for at least two or three years now you can hold them for a long time if you want to that's that's up to you and make sure you're not exposed to you're not exposed to a single company by more than five percent all right i'll be right back right after this go Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweet Kiwi. We just want to wrap up today's uh, today's conversation and uh, also a chance to uh, to say thank you for our millions of viewers and listeners, particularly Ruben Jackson in Faceville, Georgia, Emerson Khan in Johns Creek, Georgia, and Anna Lowe in Decatur, Georgia. If you would want us to give you a shout out, consider subscribing to our channel, like, share, comment, and we'll really appreciate it. So here are the three ways to invest like a sophisticated hedge fund manager. Invest in alternative mutual funds, mimic holdings of best performing funds, and invest in Forbes 2000, the world's largest public companies. Now, another thing you want to do here is that investing like a hedge fund ma manager requires a couple of skills and a couple of, and, and a specific mindset. And you want to use these tips to have fun and investment that is right for you. You want to constantly review your needs and goals. You want to consider how long you want to invest, adopt an investment plan, draft an investment plan, and execute it, diversify it all the time. You know, you want to check the charges because investment charges, investment fees also sometimes eat away at your profits. You know, find out which investments you want to absolutely avoid and review periodically, right? We're not talking about you know stock watching your portfolio here. No, you want to. You can look every uh, twice a year or or every quarter. That's about normal, and this shouldn't be taken that this shouldn't be taken a lot of time. So uh, you know, it could be 30 minutes on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon. 30 minutes, one hour, just to review a portfolio, and that's it. All right. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time. Remember, stay marvelous.